Hi. Hey, and uh, thank you for the kind invitation to present today. And and uh, welcome, everybody. I'm glad you could join us uh, for the webinar today. Um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, there we go. So, hey, everybody out there. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, address a question that I get asked a lot. Uh, and I wanted uh, this opportunity to kind of uh, just put in perspective uh, what is insertion loss and how much is too much. Um, I'll also uh, uh, mention a couple other uh, preliminary uh, comments about um, the, uh, what we're going to present today. I mean, this is a kind of a broad topic. Uh, there's a limited time. And so I just want to focus on this one very special question, kind of put it in perspective. But I'm also providing a lot of additional information available for you guys. And I, I list here on the, on the cover slide uh, a few other resources to check out. Um, so if you haven't already, uh, check out my new latest textbook on transmission lines. We'll go through a little bit of the details about the properties of signals on transmission lines, but don't really address this question of insertion loss directly there. But it gives you a lot of background about transmission lines, how to think about signals on interconnects. Um, in uh, my original textbook, Signal and Power Integrity Simplified, we cover insertion loss quite a bit, and there's additional details in there. Um, and uh, uh, in addition, I'll mention that um, uh, we, we um, have a whole bunch of different uh, webinars related to this topic on uh, bethesignal.com. Uh, and so you'll definitely want to check it out. And then um, I'm the technical editor of the um, Signal Integrity Journal. And that's also a great uh, free resource of additional information about this topic and other topics on signal integrity, power integrity, and EMI as well. Um, so I am actually part of Teledyne LaCroix, my own company, Bogotan Enterprises, where I used to do a lot of training around the world. We were acquired, gosh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, so I'm fully part of uh, Teledyne LaCroix. We manufacture scopes, and uh, part of my role is to provide some training for engineers. Historically, I've worked on best design principles, and now I work on or focus on best measurement principles. And I'll show you a couple of examples of, of both of those today. Now, as a uh, kind of a thank you for joining us today, um, courtesy of uh, Tell on the Crow, we've got a special offer for y'all. Uh, uh, I've collected all the classes that I used to do live, recorded them and put them on our new portal, the Signal Integrity Academy. And everybody viewing here uh, is gonna get a, a, a three month complimentary subscription to the Signal Integrity uh, Academy. And the way you do that is you go to be the signal.com, you'll pull down the tab that's a three month subscription, uh, you fill it out and here's the secret code word to add under promo code, you put web20. Uh, and that will get you um, a three-month uh, complimentary subscription. It's all you can eat buffet. You can view all of our content on uh, bethesignal.com. We've got about 200 hours of recorded video on different um, lectures and classes and presentations I've done on um, uh, all aspects of signal integrity, power integrity, and EMI. So be, for, be sure to, to check it out. Okay, so we're going to talk about insertion loss. And I thought I would just start out with a little bit about what exactly is insertion loss and why is it sometimes a really confusing topic? And so here's the fundamental definition of insertion loss. It's really characterizing uh, a device and to characterize the device and how, how much energy gets through the device, we first set it up with a transmitter on one side and a receiver on the other side. This is historically how insertion loss has always been measured. And when you set it up with the fixture, so it's the the transmitter and the receiver, you measure how much power comes through. That is your reference. That's telling you about the quality of the source and the receiver and the fixturing and the connections. That is your baseline. How much gets through with nothing in between, with no device center test in between. Then you pull apart the fixture and you insert your device, the through device. And now you measure the power that gets through. And we're really going to compare, you know, and of course, this is at each frequency, and we're really going to compare what happens to that power when you insert the device. And absolutely guaranteed, if it's a passive linear time invariant device, which is what all interconnects are, absolutely guaranteed, no matter what, you're always going to have less power coming through. That means you're going to have some loss in that power. And the definition of insertion loss is, it's how much power comes out without the device. That's the reference 
divided by the, um, uh, the, the power that comes out uh, with the device in, in place. And so the power that comes out without the device is always going to be larger than the power that's received that comes out uh, with the device in place. The power that comes through with the device is always going to be less. That means this ratio is always going to be greater than one. And so insertion loss is a positive number because that makes sense, right? Because we think of a loss as a positive thing. The bigger the loss, the less energy you have coming through, the more the attenuation, the more the loss in the system. Um, and so insertion loss, the original definition is it's the loss in the signal by inserting the device between the transmitter and the receiver. Um, and so if I have a larger insertion loss, then your sense is, oh, larger insertion loss, less signal is going to get through. I have more loss uh, from inserting that device in there. And so if you were to look at, for most materials, the attenuation of material increases with frequency. And so the loss, uh, kind of the energy that goes into, into heat, uh, is going to increase with frequency. And so we would see an insertion loss kind of looking like this. As we go up in frequency, the loss is going to increase. I get less signal coming through. Okay, that's how we think of insertion loss. It's very intuitive that way. A larger insertion loss, less signals coming through. I'm getting more loss in the interconnect. Uh, and so uh, what, what does it mean about the device? If the insertion loss is large, not as much as getting through. It's not as good, not as transparent and interconnected. There's a large insertion loss. OK, 